Yep. Give him a minute to. Hey, William, are you going to hear us? Yeah, you got me. Yes. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Congratulations on the win, the playoff berth, just everything. Can you walk us through how you're feeling right now? Uh, incredible. <laughs> on cloud nine for sure. Um, there was a point of that race that I didn't really think things were going to work out in our favor to uh, to make the playoffs and, you know, really have have a, an opportunity next week. So this was kind of one of those um, – do or die situations and um, kind of cross that fork in the road tonight and, and um, we're able to be aggressive and make it happen and really just the final probably 10 laps of the race I just was on um, on offense and trying to trying to just win the race and take whatever run I could and um, luckily was able to make the moves that I needed to got just enough daylight between the 22 and the 43 to kind of split that gap and um, you know I'd, I'd push the 43 really aggressively up to there and he had did a, done a great job to hold on to his car and get us to that place and position. And um, and from there, then the next restart, got a great push from the 14. Um, you know, and then was fortunate that things worked out to where I had the nine on with me on the last lap and, um, you know, was able to make it work. So just incredible. I don't even know what to say really. It's a huge blessing. Awesome. Well, we are very happy for you. We're going to open up the floor um, to the media for questions. As a reminder, if you do have a question, please click the participants tab and raise your hand. Um, or you can send me a chat and we will get to you. Let's kick it off here with Bob Pockers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, William, can you kind of describe your emotions from the first red flag where, you know, things didn't look that great to the finish where not only do you get in the playoffs, but you score your first career win? Yeah, honestly, um, the emotions for me were just to uh, just to make it happen and try to uh, try to get where I needed to be. And um, I was taking every single run uh, in the last five, six laps of that race. So I think that's what you're supposed to do. And um, that's what Dale Jr.'s taught me at JRM days. And, um, you know, really just uh, was able to, to work it out. And very fortunate that, that the runs did work out because a lot of times they don't. But this time they did. So it was great. And, you know, this is the first year that the, that this race, this last end of the regular season race was at Daytona. Could you imagine it being any more pressure filled or were you still relaxed throughout? No, it couldn't have, you couldn't have picked a more pressure packed race. Um, you know, when you're at a super speedway and the running order changes every two laps, practically, it's incredible to put that much pressure on a couple of points. Um, you really can't points race, which I think is probably what, they want us to do. They don't want us to points race. They want us to go for wins and, and try to compete hard. So um, it was the perfect format for that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate that it worked out for us. You know, I probably would have been frustrated if it didn't, but it really forces your hand to go for the win. And uh, you just you just got to go all out. So uh, pretty incredible kind of elimination style race that this was tonight. I think it prepares us for the future elimination races coming up here in the playoffs. And really had the feeling of what it was like um, being in the Xfinity Championship race. So um, it was pretty crazy out there. Thank you. Yep. All right, we'll take our next question from Jordan Bianchi. Go ahead, Jordan. Uh, William, going back to last weekend at Dover, that, that first Dover race obviously was a struggle for you guys. And you, it sounded on the radio, you guys were pretty frustrated with each other. Was there a conversation between you and Chad after that race to clear the air or anything going into that second Dover race? Yeah, I mean, I think we just – through those situations yeah they're not they're not pretty and it was a it was the worst time of the year to have a, a bad race like that but we learn more f about each other uh in those moments in those situations you know i think you know i think that you know i learned a little bit about him and what things that i could um learn how to communicate better and and he learned a little bit about me as well so um you know i think that's what's propelled us into this really kind of hot streak that we're on you know we had a fourth on Sunday and then and then under pressure, really both races were under extreme pressure and we executed. So that's a good sign for uh, for what's coming up. You, you talked about learning about each other. What did you learn about him and what did he learn about you specifically? I think just tones and just, um, you know, what information's helpful, what's not, you know, it's it's not uh, it's not personal by any means, but it's just what what's helpful. And, um, you know, what can I do to help him uh, get the car better? What can he do to help me? So. Um, we had a phenomenal run on Sunday at Dover, drove from, I think we started 23rd and, and finished fourth. So that was a great run and then come here and uh, win the race is incredible. So uh, thankful for his support and just really blessed. 
last question for me. Um, Chad's an intense competitor. Uh, did, is it hard sometimes to match that intensity or have a crew chief who's who's kind of telling you what to do sometimes, maybe too much? Um, it's not hard. It, you know, he just wants it as bad as I do. Um, you know, some crew chiefs, I guess, are – a little bit more laid back. I don't know. It just um, we both want it really bad, so it's uh, we want to want to try to win races and keep it going. Thank you. Yep. All right, we'll take our next question from Davey Siegel. Go ahead, Davey. Hey, William. I know we're going back a couple of years here, but when you first entered the Cup Series, did you imagine getting your first win a little bit earlier? And in the months and years that followed, did you ever question yourself and say, "When's this win going to come? Can I really get this done?" Um. No, I think you just gotta capitalize given the opportunity the opportunities in the cup series to win races you know it, it's it's hard so it's um you know you just got to capitalize and you know just it, it came together tonight and um you know we capitalized so it just I don't know it just um you know it's it's um the best series and and um really is tough out there so you just gotta gotta fight really hard so I've learned a lot and learned a lot about you know how to how to get to that next step. And so hopefully we just keep it going. Thank you. Congrats. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll take our next one from Daniel McFadden. Go ahead, Daniel. William. So um, after 98 tries, when you crossed the finish line, what was the first thought that popped into your head? Uh, the playoffs, <laughs> I guess. Um, just thinking about that. And honestly, the first thought probably was just how excited I knew that my team was, uh, how excited Tab was on the radio, how excited Chad was, um, how excited I was. That that feeling of coming off four, you know, it's just a shot of adrenaline right into your arm. You know, it really is um, – it's just an incredible feeling. I mean, I can't describe winning a race in NASCAR. Um, you know, it's just – it's been a while, um, and so it just is an awesome feeling. Before today, like, where would you have expected to get your first cup win at, if, if not Daytona? Uh, I didn't really expect it anywhere. I think, you know, this was probably a, a great opportunity for it, um, you know, but I didn't really expect it anywhere. I think we came really close at Martinsville last year, racing Truex, um, ironically racing Martin again tonight. So, I don't know. I think just, um, you know, whenever you're really, really close, you got to capitalize. So, um Definitely thankful that, that it worked out tonight. All righty, we're going to take our next question from Sterling with KCOU. Go ahead, Sterling. First of all, William, congrats on the victory tonight. Uh, a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first is uh, with 15 to go or somewhere late in the race uh, when the late caution came out, the call to bring your car down pit road. Uh, was there any... Uh, kind of doubt or any um, emotions behind the wheel thinking um, that the chance to make the playoffs was out the window at that point? No, I mean, I, th I think Chad and I had a good plan going in that we wanted to be able to be aggressive and we had ran quite a bit of laps on those tires and some pretty hard ones, you know, two and three wide at the front. So I think it was the right call. Um, yeah, it was pretty jammed up and hard to get back towards the front and but there's always a lot of laps left at these tracks and I really think the move um, or the good fortune of the race was when we missed that wreck. You know, I, I just had a feeling after missing that wreck that we were in a good position. Um, you know, we kind of, we kind of crossed that one hurdle that it seems to take at this track to really, to win races. And, and as soon as you do that, you kind of got to capitalize on it. So um, I knew once we got to two or three to go that we had a great opportunity and um, typically the, you know, there's some things that happened on that final restart that I've noticed, um, and it, we were just in the right position. We, kind of being second there was might have been the better position to be in. So we're just really, really fortunate that that worked out, and the 14 was pushing us, and and then just had to be aggressive. And the second question that I have is with all of the kind of the strategizing and the mental games of racing on these super speedways, Daytona and Talladega, um, just back and forth. Um, how important is um, basically the spotter and the crew chief, uh, especially with Chad Canals in your ear, encouraging you on behind the wheel, uh, especially with the realization late in the race that you won't have a big realistic shot to win it. Yeah, I think it's just um, <clears throat> probably the most critical thing on the speedways is knowing where other cars are in terms of 
whether that comes from your spotter or the mirror, I feel like it's a little bit of both. Honestly, you use your spotter as a guide. It's kind of 50% of the equation. You know, the other equation is is your mirrors. And so I think, you know, we, we try to spend a lot of time in the shop getting that stuff right. And, um, you know, it, it paid off tonight, you know, just knowing where other cars are, especially in the last couple laps and being able to watch your mirrors and, and figure those things out. Also, you know, iRacing's got some good good programs on there for, you know, the realism aspect of the visuals and, you know, so kind of learn some things off of that too. Thanks, William. Congrats yep. on the win. All right. Our next question is going to come from Stephen Conley. Go ahead, Stephen. William, uh, do you feel that if you had not make, taken that move between the 22 and the 43 as that accident is starting to happen, that you would have likely been involved in that hindsight being what it is? Yeah, I don't really know what happened. Um, you know, I don't know if I directly caused it or not. I'm sure I had a role because cars were bouncing off me both sides. But, yeah, I mean, they ba they bounced off each other. The 22 made a late block, um, and they bounced off each other, and I had already pushed the 43 into that hole. So I was committed, and um, at that point, you know, the middle, not the middle, but really just daylight opened up between the two cars after they bounced off each other. They kind of separated, and I had enough of a run to stick it in there and complete it practically, and I was going to go for that because I needed the points and I needed to try to, you know, finish the race in first, second, or third. I, I really had that in mind. So as soon as that happened, I, I really went for it. And, um, and then the final restart, you know, it was really just me versus Stinney and the 19. And, um, you know, it came down to just a couple guys. So I had to try to make it happen there too. And uh, you mentioned that uh, the big wreck and the avoidance of, of like the 37. Uh, first off, how much information did you get from Tad to get through that? And did you go through with both eyes open? I did. Um, you know, Tab played a really big role there. I mean, he kind of uh, – he said to go low before I even thought about going low. I was kind of in the in the middle of the track, and um, I knew that I was on the top of three wide. I just made a move on the 19 to get to the outside of him into turn three. So I was on the top of three wide and pretty committed. I saw the 18 start to smoke up there. I was hoping he would hold it against the wall and not and not cause a wreck, and I think it, I think a wreck happened right behind him. And however it formed, those guys just started to kind of go up against the wall. I still had enough momentum to to kind of try to get by it. And Tab said to go low and and gas it up. So he was he was really on his game there. Um, you know, and you just gotta go for any daylight that you see and just hope it works out. Um, luckily, the 37 kind of went back up the track, and I gassed it up to get by, and it just worked out. It was um, it was incredible, really. I think that was a turning point for sure, and. Very fortunate that that worked out to allow us to have an opportunity. Congratulations on the first win. Best of luck in playoffs. Thanks. All right, we'll take our next one from Andrew Curlin. Go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, William, you alluded to earlier how the first thought that went through your mind was that you were in the playoffs, and, and that starts next week. Is it difficult to get your first win and, and have to quickly shift focus to already having to race in the playoffs? Well, I mean, fortunately, we – we have pretty long weeks now with uh, no practice and qualifying. So kind of get a few days to take it in. And um, I think we get like two more days than normal. So um, you got Sunday tomorrow, which I'm probably going to hang out with some buddies and try to uh, have a good time. And then, you know, Monday, Tuesday, we'll get ready for Darlington. Luckily we had a, we had a pretty good car there. I think we're going to make some improvements and um, you know, Darlington's a track that we traditionally have run well at. So um, looking forward to that one for sure. Thanks, William. Thank you. All right, and we'll take our last question for William from Dominic with the Racing Experts. Go ahead, Dominic. Thank you. William, so when you look back on this race, let's say 10, 20 years down the road from now, what are you going to remember most about it? Um, just the excitement of of crossing the line. Um, you know, I I think it's, you know, it's been a long time coming for this win and, um, you know, in the Cup Series and, you know, I was thinking the other day before this race, actually, just how long it's actually been since I've won a race. So I've uh, I've really been wanting to win and, and have that feeling again of adrenaline. And, um, yeah, the duel this year was kind of half of that, I th I'd say, three quarters of that feeling. Um, and I just want that feeling again. So this is awesome, man. It's, uh, it's going to be great to celebrate with my family and just extremely blessed and fortunate that it worked out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, William. Well, it looks like that's all we've got for you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Congratulations on the win, and we will see yeah. you at Darlington. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.